on this edition of The Self-Publishing Show. The process of getting it so that users think it's easy and they think they can do it, that's been the biggest challenge. So we have been refining it and taking in feedback from our current beta testers. We want authors to feel like they can create these if they want to. Publishing is changing. No more gatekeepers, no more barriers, no one standing between you and your readers. Do you want to make a living from your writing? Join indie bestseller Mark Dawson and first-time author James Blatch as they shine a light on the secrets of self-publishing success. This is The Self-Publishing Show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Hello, it's Friday, and it's The Self-Publishing Show with me, James Blatch. And me, Mark Dawson. I have to apologize, my lighting is broken. Oh. In the old days, you had a light switch, didn't you? And now you have an app and a hub somewhere and it's one of my children's disconnected it to plug in something oh. and now i can't change them so i'm, I'm red and john might be able to tweak it in post-production but i'm normally the correct color yeah and i'm i have very bad lighting because i'm in i'm in the home office not in the office office this is a good job that most people listen to this podcast it is because we look very unprofessional today we've let the lighting down um good yes well we are uh in the uk which is currently going through its third wave, which is a silent wave, is not causing huge amounts of damage in hospitals, but my children are all, uh, it's unbelievable what's gone through in our school. I don't know if you've had the same thing. So Emily's isolating. She's sent off her test. She's been negative on the lateral flow test, but lots of her friends have tested positive. Her uh, friends' daughters have tested, tested positive. And there, I think, are eight people left out of 60 in one of the year groups in school. It's suddenly it's ripping through the school children in this country, although it's not causing any damage, thankfully, and most of them barely know they've got it, but it's um, suddenly everywhere. I'm talking about the virus, by the way. Not Yes, yeah, no, I've, well, Freya finishes school today, so she's off her last day today, and Samuel is off next week, so um, they'll be, well, you know, shielded as much as they can, I guess. Although, you know, we are talking about this with, with Lucy last night, whether, you know, kids getting it is such a you know they need to get it to get to the the level they think they need yes. in order to suppress it so there's a, there's a lot of discussion about exactly that at the moment but um yeah so hopefully wherever you are in the world it's uh it's not mm. too bad the vaccines i can tell you just looking at the the facts the vaccines are the winning ticket here because in france across the sea not that far away from us they haven't progressed anything like as far with their vaccine program and the number of people in intensive care and dying from the virus as a proportion is dramatically higher than it is in the UK. So they have a couple of thousand cases a day and 40 or 50 people dying a day. We're having 12, 14, 15,000 cases a day and 10 to 20 people in hospital. So it's the vaccines are the way forward with that. But, um, and we still, but we are still in that kind of post COVID era. I think from the economy point of view, there's definitely a shift on towards the digital world. And, you know, we've said this before, we're, we're authors, we operate as indie authors primarily digitally not exclusively, but primarily digitally. I don't think there's many authors who who rely on the physical side of books for a big chunk of their income. And so in a way we are well-placed hopefully to um, uh, for our, to protect ourselves at least from, from a big downturn in the industry. And uh, you know, of course you are a physical author. Um, no. You are an actual author, yes. Yeah. But uh, you do have physical books. Are they an important part of your income or are they... Uh, uh, sort yeah, of shop window been. for you no they have been the um the cleaner in hardback and paperback did really really well um had a very nice check um for that not too long ago the the second book saint death didn't do quite as well so we're not quite sure why that is there's loads of who knows really when the cleaner came out shops had just reopened kind of um the circumstances are a little bit different when the second one came out, so we don't know quite how that affected it, whether the cover was right. It's it's very hard to say. Um, so it's done okay, but not as well as the first one. Um, so, yeah, there's there's that. But then, you know, I had a book out on... I've had two releases this month, um, one in German and one the the, the ninth, 19th Milton book, and they've both done really well. Um, so, I mean, the German one is just kind of racing away it's in the top 100 in germany and has been for a couple of weeks um and the milton book launched i was actually in the i was in the bookseller this week in their book stat chart as the fifth highest ebook selling for according to the book stat methodology um that week so that was that was great and that's you know that's that's going really well so 
um, you know, it's been a pretty good month in terms of sales. Certainly no complaints there. Good. Yes. And I'm, I've had a good June with my one book. I think I made £127, something like that, uh, over June and signed up just over two people a day onto my mailing list. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah, I'm really pleased with that. It seems to have, um, you know, followed the pattern I discovered, which is, um, you know, to really optimize the Facebook ads and, and I can make a small profit every day. I scaled them up a little bit just by a couple of quid and that seems to have worked, but there's only four days. I haven't looked at yesterday yet, but three days, I think, before yesterday. Um, it may have just been a coincidence there was a bump in sales. But yeah, it can be done with one book. It'd be an um, exciting prospect for me. And it, what would be really nice is to have a few minutes here and there to write the second book, which I think I had two writing sessions in the last seven days, which has not been, it's not going to get the baby bathed. I've never heard that before. No, that's that's, <laughs> that's true. No, it's, uh, there's, there's lots going on. I mean, I've, uh, I'm quite extensively involved in Facebook ads at the moment in... Um, in the UK, US, Canada, Australia, France, and Spain. Um, so mm. we're testing different variations, different audiences, and getting some pretty decent CPC rates. And in the UK, um, it's going really well, actually. I've, I've put the Cleaner and the first Atticus book to 99 pence, and they're selling really strongly. Um, Atticus has been in the top 150 for about two and a half, three weeks, um, and it's driving sales of the second book. It's really clear. The second book has had a very long tail um, from when I launched it. And I'm sure that's because people are buying the first one cheap, enjoying it, and then immediately buying the second one, which is it's still cheap. It's still only one ninety nine, So it's, it is a an impulse buy. But I, I, have, I should probably sit down and work out what the read through is, but I think it's probably quite high. Um, mm. And would I'd love to write another one. I mean, I'm going to, I am going to, I'm contracted with the audiobook production company to, to write a third one. And I really want to write one fast, but, um, I've, I've got to write another Milton um, and then I'll, I'll get to Atticus probably at the end of the year. Um, mm. Will they ever meet? No, no, definitely not. No, those are... So seven different universes. Separate separate universes, yeah. Mm. But it's both contemporary. I know, but those two, they're much too different. One's, yeah. a, one's a detective, one's an assassin. You know, it's not... No, not... <sighs> I think yeah, I think at some point Hollywood's going to say to you, you're going to have to, they're going to have to meet. Um, okay, good. Right, let's uh, crack on with uh, with this week's interview, and it's a good one. It's with Corey Aldrin from Bookbrush. A Bookbrush is a tool that came along a bit like Canva, um, Photoshop, but specifically for authors. And the specifics of it really are the key difference with Bookbrush. If you haven't used it before, if you want to create something like a 3D box set or cover up. Um, uh, you know, the, what's it called? The, um, oh, I can't remember what it's called, but the slightly jazzier version of your cover, like it's on a book. You can dra drag and drop. It makes life very easy. Even someone like me can create a really good looking box set. And I have done uh, for our few stuff. Um, but they are not resting on their laurels. They're rolling out quite a lot of new changes. In fact, by the time this interview goes out, I think all the changes will be live, which Corey talks about in this interview. So worth uh, listening to and catching up and at some point having a play with Book Brush yourself. Here's Corey. This is the Self Publishing Show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Okay, Corey Aldrin, welcome back to the Self Publishing Show. It's been a while, hasn't it? I think you were on maybe year before last. Uh, it, it has been a while. Thanks for having me back. You're welcome. Well, Bookbrush has gone from being kind of a new kid on the block to a firm fixture, I think, in the indie publishing space. And I guess maybe wider than that as well. I don't know. Does Bookbrush lend itself? Actually, there's a clue in the name. I was going to say, does it lend itself to other things beyond books? But really, you focus on books, right? It's all about books. That's everything. Yeah. Authors use us for, you know, other things too in their personal life. But uh, yeah. yeah, we focus you could, all about books. You could do business cards and stuff like that if you wanted, I'm sure, with uh, with your technology. Yep. Um, and I guess that is one of the things that makes Bookbrush useful is that it's, it's, it's easy to do what you need to do. So if you need to create a spine of a book, I think if you went into Photoshop and you needed to create a spine of a book, you'd have to have quite a lot of knowledge about dimensions and all this stuff set up and then how to manipulate text. But that's what Bookbrush delivers. And maybe you should explain this better than I do, what, what the aim of Bookbrush is. Really, from the beginning, it's always been about helping authors create images very easily. So uh, this, you know, authors can 
hire somebody to do it and it's very expensive, but there are some ways from our end that we can make it very easy for authors to create something that already looks nice very quickly, uh, easily. So yeah. So anything related to creating social media images or, um, things for your email or really anything related to images that an author can think about, they can do in book brush. And we have lots of ways of making it in that very simple for them. So, yeah. And this is not academic to me anymore because since we last had you on the show, I've, I'm now a huge pub. I, I, I am a published author, but I am amazingly, <laughs> amazingly, uh, yeah. but I'm also a publisher. We publish other people's books. So I have had to go into book brush and use it in anger. And uh, in fact, I will send um, an image to John so you can put it up on the screen now. This is a pack shot. Um, so sort of the box set that I did. And honestly, unless you've done this, you will not believe how easy it is to make what looks like a very, very professional looking box set image just from having the covers available. Um, I think I was yeah. helped by having the covers with no text on them as well. Stuart sends those to me. And I think that's essential these, this day and age. If you get your covers done, ask the designer as part of the deal. If you'll send them without the title and author name and, and, ta and taglines, whatever on there, gives you some background yeah. image. But actually, I think the first time I did it, I, didn't, I did have the text. And I still found it easy to stretch and manipulate and use that as background image. And uh, well, the result speaks for itself. I think it looks pro. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. It, uh, I will say that the team has done a great job of, uh, putting, you know, 99% of the box set, for example, the image is, um, is your book and the, the 3d effect, right? So our team has done a great job of creating that 3d effect. And when you combine them together, uh, almost never do you have to actually manipulate the image. Like you said, if you have the image that you want, that's to together perfectly. So, yeah. Yeah. No, it works really well. And you can spend your time just fine tuning it. So it's all lined up and so on. And um, although I think it yeah. wasn't lined up and I said to Stuart, I'm not sure if one of these is lined up. He said, it doesn't matter. He said, what, <laughs> what, you know, he's a professional yeah. designer who does this day in, day out. He said, if you look at that and it looks great, that's what matters. He said, don't get bogged down in millimeters here and there. Yeah. a bit yeah. of an amateur <laughs> mistake with graphic design. But um, yeah, so I think it's put that level of professional and it is graphic design ultimately in the hands of amateurs, which is you and me being able to do it, as you say, and that's a cost saving in terms of using professionals. Um, do you, you obviously run the support side of book brush as well there. I mean, do you find that authors without experience of using this type of software are able to use it easily? Or, I mean, do you end up supporting people through the process? Yeah, it, it varies depending on the type of author. Of course, if you've got an author who, uh, go straight to our templates. It's almost impossible to mess up because it's very simple. You you load a template that you like. It looks great for your book. All you do is swap out your cover, right? And a couple, couple of switches. Uh, there are some pieces as you get a little bit more complicated. We try to do everything very easy, but have the options in case authors want to do these other things. And so sometimes authors will, will ask us, oh, I saw this really cool effect that an author did on their image. Is that possible to do here? And so... Yeah, we, we walk people through. We, we actually have classes too. So when things like that like come up a lot, Kathleen, who is ahead of our support and all of that, she, she puts together a course on it and gets people in there live asking questions. So yeah, we help the author as much as they need throughout the whole process. So Yeah, and how's it going from the company point of view? I mean, this started as a, as I guess, a, I guess a few <laughs> of you must have quit your day jobs to, to make this work. And is it, has it paid off? Yeah, yeah, it, it, uh, it, it's been doing great. It hasn't, uh, it hasn't slowed down since uh, I think we launched um, 2018, early 2018. So things have just been on the rise. In 2018, uh, probably not long before we actually met, met you, you guys at, at Nink, um, it was just three of us doing it, uh, two of us doing it full time. <laughs> and uh, since, we, I mean, every, every year we've been growing and adding we're up to nine people on the team now wow. doing various things. So, yeah. And you all work from home? Yes. Yeah. We're uh, across the globe, mostly in the U.S., but across the globe. Nobody's in the same look. Well, we've got a couple of people that are kind of close to each other, uh, but for the most part, all interaction online. So, yes, the modern way. Um, yeah. And what do you do, Corey? You, I think you're a developer yourself. You've done some of the coding in the early days or? 
Yeah, yeah. So when it first started, I was the the only developer on the team. I started everything from scratch. Um, that's still my main focus. I do all, half my time, at least, is devoted to continuing that, managing the team, um, and then the other half is uh, doing some other stuff related to growing the business. So mm. podcasts. <laughs> yeah, podcasts. I was going to say, how do you grow the business? Do you run, do you run any paid ads anywhere? We do. We do some paid ads on Facebook. We've done things on uh, YouTube channels, uh, things like that. Those have been our two biggest ones that have been helpful so far, hmm. and and some conferences. Yes, yeah, of course. Cool. So yeah. that's uh, I think always pays off to have actual physical presence and talk to authors. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And we're looking forward to doing that again, maybe <laughs> this year. Yes, <laughs> hopefully. Um, okay, so let's talk about the developments then since we last spoke. Um, in fact, I think maybe even the box set image was enhanced since we spoke before. Yeah, I mean, since the last time, there could be uh, quite a few things, actually. Yeah. Uh, we, we are adding things quite, quite quickly. Uh, some, of the, some of the things maybe, you know, since we last spoke, like you said, the box set creator, we've added a, a lot more options there. Like um, we've already touched on being able to create everything from the box set creator to create the box set. We have a, a cover creator which I don't know that we talked too much about before either, but the biggest thing about that that authors really like is being able to convert their, um, their ebook version to their paperback version, very simple. So we auto load Amazon's uh, dimensions and we put all the you know, lines so you know exactly where the front cover and the back cover and the spine are supposed to go. So make it really simple to be able to just, you know, I, I, the most basic use of it is a an author taking their ebook cover, placing it on the front, right there, and then doing a few small tweaks to make a simple physical book. So really helpful for people who you know main focus is ebook, but they have a um, the the physical book as well. So yeah, that's really yeah. useful, and it is fiddly and will quickly get rejected uh, if you don't get that right to get the dimensions and that's exactly the yeah. sort of thing that people struggled with before you know it's all very well having an idea for an image but then getting those dimensions right and uh, and then exporting it is also problematic it's got to be a pdf and i guess you make that easy because in fact i did this just the other day with an old cover um <laughs> from photoshop and actually exporting the pdf at the right resolution and size because it always wants to resize it when you, when you sort of print it as a PDF. And um, yeah, that's that's going to save a lot of headaches, I think. Yeah, yeah. And it, uh, well, we were told before, well, when we first started creating it, we heard a lot of people say like, you know, we first thought Amazon had, you know, a basic one. And we're like, well, do, do we really need to create one? But we kept hearing people saying they were frustrated with even Amazon's. Mm. Uh, and so we decided to to do that. And it's been it's been helping lots of authors, so. I do yeah. shudder a bit at the prospect of at the point of uploading your book in the KDP bookshelf, and that's the point <laughs> at which you create your cover. And it's a bit, you know, yeah. you really need yeah. to sit and quietly and do that <laughs> before you're uploading and publishing your book. I think the big thing recently is is video. Yeah, so we've drastically uh, upgraded video capabilities. Uh, for a long time, we've had the ability to, you know, up, upload a video that goes behind and gives a, a slight bit of like movement to your an image, right? But we have drastically updated that. And we now have what we call trailer creator. And it's it's currently in beta, um, potentially will be released full here, maybe even by the time uh, this goes live. But it, it, uh, it really brings the same concept that we have for images of being able to, you know, like I said, start from scratch and just swap out your book. And, and there you go, you have an image, you can adjust it if you want. We're doing the exact same thing for video. So we have one of our new hires is a, a videographer. He's been doing lots of video and media and stuff for, for, for many years. He's putting these together for us, which will be trailers for authors. And all they have to do is add their book, download, and they have a trailer. Um, they can just like everything else that we have, like I mentioned before, you can adjust to exactly how you want. You can adjust the text. You can tell it when to slide in, when to slide out, you know, like the different transitions. You can adjust the transition. You can add different background videos. You can upload your own, things like that, to adjust it to make it exactly your book. 
Uh, so it has that full capability, just like a, a full video software would that you would expect. Mm. But the big, but the big thing that is different about this compared to those is it's very author specific, just like our image templates are. And if you want something for your romance book, for example, we'll have a whole list of romance uh, templates that you can pull up and it'll look nice right out of the box. Yeah, I saw you had a new hire, uh, a video guy. Um, so that looks uh, obviously a, a, an important direction for you to going in. And it's something that authors ask about all the time. Um, yeah. And again, something that I mean, I'm a video editor by you know, my freelance days, um, but it, takes, it is fiddly, more fiddly, I would say, than, than still manipulation video. Not everyone grasps it, uh, the timeline yeah. concept and stuff. So I think simplifying that with the old template uh, approach is going to be a boon to authors who are uh, scared of going near premiere pro or whatever yeah yeah and that's actually you know the the part that's probably taken us 80 percent of our time on developing this uh creating it and the ability to do it was actually the simple part uh from a development side but the the process of getting it so that users think it's easy and they think they can do it has been that's been the biggest challenge so we are. We have been refining it and taking in feedback from our current beta testers to really get that. That's the part is authors. We want authors to feel like they can create these uh, if they want to, and it is. It is there. It's almost done and going to be released uh, out of beta uh, to everybody here soon. So okay. yeah. Okay. Well, it'll probably be I don't know maybe three weeks or so, four weeks before this goes out. Do you think it'll be live by then? Yes, it will okay. be. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to playing with that then. So I'm getting. Yeah. Uh, I do have a video ad for my book, which is just being tweaked at the minute. Um, but um, I will definitely be one for uh, for trying that out. And it sounds to me, Corey, like potentially we could also do an SPFU webinar on the video side of things. Maybe once it's live. Um, yeah. It's it's always helpful, I think, to have you demo it uh, live. And perhaps go through and create a, a trailer for it to you or one of your colleagues. Um, we'll sort that out off air and um, get a date in the die if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. Because that, yeah, such a visual thing that people will understand it way better when they see it. So, yeah. yeah. So the platform, I mean, you must have had some growing pains, I imagine. When you start, start with just a few people and then suddenly more and more people join the platform. I know what it was like from SPS point of view, just providing online courses. Um, you've yeah. been scaling up and keeping up with all this. Yeah. Yeah. We've had, uh, well, like you can probably imagine, we've had some bumps in the road over the last few years, especially when we get these, uh, drastic increases of, uh, new users. Uh, yeah. The being able to manage and storing, all the media and uh, yeah, is we've had we've had a few times where it got mm. close. It was like, oh, yeah. we're close. We need to get this done. Been, yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, exactly. We've had with some late nights getting the team on on a last minute call to be like, all right, we this we didn't see this happening today, uh, but we have to do it today. So <laughs> yeah. let's let's get this done. Yeah, fortunately, I think you've been though, we got a good team. Incredibly hard at it all, and. Do you see many trends from where you are, Corey? Is there something you see authors asking for more that they didn't ask for a couple of years ago, anything like that? Yeah, well, probably restating myself a little bit, but the whole reason we started video was just seeing more and more people wanting uh, trailers. It's It's been a big thing recently. Um, things like, even smaller things like uh, adding like audio, uh, you know, these, you know, the little audio thing to your, to your image. So that, cause audio books are becoming really big. Right. Oh, yeah. And so being able to share, I'll say images and quotes, they're not really images, but they, you know, you can add this little movement yes. of something on your image to make it, you know, ads are becoming harder and harder, right. To stand out. And so people are asking for things that move and make their book, you know, shake or whatever, something like that to make their book stand out a little bit more. Um, those have been the big things we've had. That's been the main thing. Yeah, I can understand that. Um, so just going back to the video trade, just thinking about it, what's, what would an author need? So most authors perhaps have their cover um, and they might just have that even with the text on it. Is that going to be enough assets, as it were, for them to be able to use this video creation tool? 
Yeah, yeah. At the very basic level, uh, you want something uh, that looks that looks nice, and you just have your book cover. Yeah, but basically, you, you load up this template like I was telling you. It's got the full scene already built in, and you just a couple clicks, and your book is in the placement of where the placeholder book is. Wow. Uh, we we fill it in with our own text, but that can be swapped out really easily as well for them. So something like maybe they're adding a review on one of them or one of the kind of slides is um, like a description of the book or, you know, multiple slides of leading up to the description of the book, like they can adjust the text them mm. themselves. So you've got a, a, a library of stock video. Where, where did you, did you commission your own stock video? Did you put, pull that off the shelf from somewhere? Yeah, we use a, a fairly common one. Uh, it's called Pixabay. And it oh, yeah. has the, the, the biggest reason we use that is it, it's free. Every single image and video on there is uh, you can use commercially. So you can use them in your ads, you can use them in your books, whatever. So make it so that authors don't have to, to worry about that. Hmm. What's their <laughs> business model then? Uh, they are, uh, I think they just, they work from letting people provide like what do you call it? Tips or something okay. to the people. It's a small team that I think they make money off of ad revenue. If you go to the website, okay, uh, things like that. Yeah. Uh, so, how much does it cost to book brush now, Corey? We have a few different levels. The basic level, which gets you into basically creating all the images um, and all the templates for images, is uh, about a hundred dollars a year. The next level up, which includes but haven't really talked about this feature. It's a it's an older feature, but it's one of the a popular one. It's called instant mockups. That gives you the ability to have your book kind of like in, in real life hands and um, uh, you know real life visuals, I guess that you can't quite do in a typical kind of image creation. That's at the hundred about hundred fifty dollar level, and then the the trailer creator uh, will be included on our two hundred and fifty dollar a year plan that we have okay um tell me about the mock-ups then so you, yeah. you're talking about sort of what what are live images of humans but they'll be holding your book or that's yeah yeah basically it's uh it, the the tool itself is very simple you basically get this long list of i think we're up to 1500 different images now these real life photos um and you take your book, you click your book, you click your images that you want, you say download, and you get them all, uh, as many as you want in this one nice file that you can use to then share wherever you want. But they are, they, they range from, you know, like some people call them lay flats, where it's like the book flat on like a bed or a desk or, you know, whatever kind of your genre is with other things kind of in the mix. Uh, people holding the book, you see like actors reading them. Um, a popular one is a dog that has the book in its mouth. Like it looks like it's trying to give you the book, uh, different things with like audio. Um, and yeah. 1500 odd so that you're not going to see, you'll be pretty unlucky to have it repeated with somebody else's book in the uh, dog's mouth too often. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. When the dog yep. might be hungry. And it, <laughs> Yeah. And then we have different genre specific ones too. So if you're in some of those, then even less likely that for it to be mass produced out there so well i'll tell you what, yeah. i'm quite galvanized again having used book brush to do the box set i need to get back on there and start playing with some of these things particularly the video <laughs> trailer um i would definitely have a go with that with a couple of the books we have going in fuse and um have a play so i've ginned myself up before you come on for that webinar <laughs> um great what's next yeah. for book brush uh well the yeah first well the Still got to get the video creator completely out. But after that, once that, that is out, we're going to go back to focusing a lot on um, redoing kind of the interface as we've, you know, we've grown, we've grown a lot. We've got lots of different tools now um, and we've uh, touched on them all a little bit, but it's because there's so many different tools, we've gotten some feedback that it's a little complicated getting around and knowing everything, what to use, when to use it. So we're trying to, uh, make that whole process way easier for authors. So getting them to the tool they need for the specific use. So then they know about all the tools too. Well, that would be, that would be great. I mean, I hadn't noticed it particularly problematic on book brush, but it will be an inevitability as you grow. And it's honestly, it's a bug 
bugbear of mine in that companies, in fact, Amazon do this, lots of companies, when they grow, they end up disparate and disjointed because I mean, Amazon is classic. You have to log in about five different little yeah. portals all over the place and they look different. They look and feel different. I think keeping that unity as you go along and not being afraid to redesign. I mean, I'm not a developer, so I don't know how much this means, but even if it's just the front end, the back end could, I don't know, could stay the same. Yeah. Maybe I think it's a really <laughs> important part of keeping your software. Apple do it very well. You know, Apple always looks beautiful, but looking yes. beautiful is a really important part of their software. And I think that's a good ethos to have personally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've been, we've been so focused on, you know, bringing out this, this sort of interface isn't a thing you, you hear authors say, like, I need a, you know, uh, a, a better looking, you know, whatever, like <laughs> you don't hear those specific no. words, but like, uh, uh, we've been so focused on all these tools and different features and stuff that, like you said, it can start to feel a little bit like siloed all these different things. And yeah. so we definitely don't want it to be that way. Once they become silos, then it's harder for authors to get to the other tools and we want them to know about all these tools that they have access to. So yeah. Or you want to keep people on the site and keep it as useful as possible to them through their yep. their career. Yep. Great. Okay, Corey. Well hopefully we might see you in, in person this year. I think you came to London, didn't you? To our um our conference. But we did. I remember yeah, having, just I remember uh, having a chat with you on the packed boat, which we all shudder about now when we think <laughs> we were just on the I got, Yeah, yeah. I got back uh just uh uh, we actually upped our, our flight home just a, a day early and got back the day before the whole thing went crazy yeah. here uh, in the US. So we got back just in time. That was absolutely yeah. bizarre, wasn't it? We all, we all went home and that was it. We were yeah, shut the front door yeah. and um, <laughs> didn't appear again for nine months. But uh, yeah, that yeah. was incredible. But uh, it was great to chat to you. I think you came over with your wife. Um, I remember chatting yep. to you on the boat and uh, that was really, really nice of you to see you there. And hopefully we'll see you maybe. I don't know if you're going to conferences this autumn. Yeah, we'll be at uh, the two that I know for sure. We'll be at our Nink and Twenty Books. So Superb. we've got those booked, and we'll be there. We'll Hopefully be... more, but yeah. a little bit up in the air. Well, we'll be at those two as well. <laughs> you know, pandemic so, willing. So yeah, as long yeah. as things settle down. Superb, Corey. Thank you very much. Thank you for producing a really useful and very well put together service for authors. Um, growing as part of the indie community, growing together. It's great to have you there and uh, we really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me too. This is fun. This is the Self Publishing Show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Are you a book brush person, Mark? Have you used book brush? Yeah, it's, it's excellent. There aren't many tools that I use or, and recommend, but that's definitely one of them. I, I don't use it that much because I, I, again, I have to pick what I do and where I spend my time. And it makes more sense to me to have a pro doing that for me. So Stuart does all, all of my images, but book brush, book brush is really good. Um, mm. Remember we met them at Nink two years ago, maybe even be three years ago now. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I'm pitched stuff quite a lot and norm, yeah. normally it's rubbish, but I could, I could immediately see that what they had done was, it's kind of like Canva, a kind of a white label Canva that's specifically aimed at what we need as authors. And I could see immediately that they were going to do quite well. And, you know, they've, they've, I think they have done well and adding products and features to the product all the time. Yeah, the video stuff looks excellent. I'm definitely going to have a play with that um, as well. That was a strange noise. Is that your dog? Yeah, Scout's he's he's whining. I think his his dog walker might be turning up, so people may hear a very excited dog in a minute. <laughs> okay, right. Well, on that dog walking note, um, I've been up since five in the morning dealing with a sick puppy just vomiting. Don't know why. It's probably because he eats absolutely everything that's anywhere near him, including socks and knickers. Um, so <laughs> okay. problematic puppy right. time. Yes. Uh, so on that note, thank you very much indeed to our guest, Corey Aldrin. Check out Book Brush. We do have a discount, I think, somewhere. If you go to selfpublishingformula.com, click on the resources tab, I think you'll probably find something there. And if you're in our courses, of course, you do get a discount and a VIP bonus into Book Brush. Um, that's it for this week, I think. All that remains for me to say is this a goodbye from him. And a goodbye from me. Goodbye. Goodbye. There he goes. Cute. Get show notes, the podcast archive, and free resources to boost your writing career at selfpublishingshow.com. Join our thriving Facebook group at selfpublishingshow.com forward slash Facebook. 
Support the show at patreon.com forward slash self-publishing show. And join us next week for more help and inspiration so that you can make your mark as a successful indie author. Publishing is changing, so get your words into the world and join the revolution with The Self-Publishing Show.